everyone, I'm Tom Hannafin, and I'm joined by the former X Division champion, Trey Miguel. Trey, of course, everyone is so excited. Impact Wrestling celebrating its 20-year anniversary Sunday, June 19th, our home city of Nashville. It's Slammiversary live on pay-per-view and Fight TV. You're someone who's main evented Slammiversary, but how important is this night to you in particular? It's weird every time I hear that I main event at Slammiversary because it, you know what I mean? Like you share, that match was like with five other people and whatnot, so I like, I, I don't know how that makes it like just leave my mind that I main event at the Slammiversary before, but I guess it did happen. It's really cool to be here for the 20th anniversary of it. Um, I think the only thing that'd make it cooler is if the asylum was still up. You know, there's a lot of history there. I've wrestled in that building quite a few times. I think. That's really the only missing component to this. Everything else is gonna be awesome about it. You've been a fan of Impact Wrestling TNA since you were a kid, so what does it mean to step in that ring each and every week? It's something surreal. Like when we get here around 1 p.m. for call time and the arena's empty and people are just wandering around the back, I always take a moment to stand on the stage and just look around and take a deep breath and just like take it in like, you're here, this isn't fake. You don't gotta pinch yourself, you worked hard. You're rewarded for it. It's, uh, I gotta remind myself pretty often, actually. It's, it's very crazy to think about. Well, you have worked extraordinarily hard in the, in the brief amount of time that I've known you. I've, I've gotten to see what your work ethic is like, but uh, even before you and I started working together, you went from a tag team competitor, part of the Rascals, and then you branched off as a singles competitor. And as I mentioned it when we started this, you're a former X Division champion. You brought home the gold at Bound for Glory in October 2021. What did that moment mean to you personally? Winning the X Division Championship, yeah. um, it was, it was bittersweet. It was bittersweet because I wish Des and Zach could have been there. I always pictured myself leaving the arena, going into the back, and being greeted by my best friends in the world, and neither of them were there. I got in the back and I laid on uh, the ground, and Zach called me, and we both cried together and then Des called me, and then we cried together, and then uh, then it really sunk in that they weren't here, but, and then it was followed by, I'm the champ, though. <laughs> it was a very big roller coaster of emotions that night. Well, you and I recently spoke about, uh, you know, you've been mentored by Alex Shelley, someone who's been a pioneer for Impact Wrestling, and when you were a kid, you were obviously glued to the TV watching Impact Wrestling, but the X Division was special to you, so to fast forward to 2021, and you're the champ. I mean, how special was that? That was really cool. It was really cool because Shelley wasn't at tapings, and I didn't send him, a, like, anything after what I got a text from him at, like, 2 a.m., like, dude, congrats, and I was like, <laughs> What is life right now, you know what I mean? Um, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I won the X Division belt. That's, all, that's my favorite championship of all of professional wrestling. I've always wanted to be the X Division champion. I got a tattooed on my leg. Did you really? Yeah, I really did. It is right there. That is sick. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes Slammiversary all the more important for you, but it's also the journey that you went on when you were champion, both in and out of the ring. So let's talk about the first night you and I met, Hard to Kill. You defend the X Division Championship against Steve Macklin. Steve Macklin's last chance to challenge you for the title as long as you were champion. You become the first person to pin Steve Macklin in Impact Wrestling. How big was that? That was really big. That was, a, man, that was a, that was a fun feud to have with uh, Macklin. I don't think he got a fair share of, um, opportunity before he came to Impact. Um, and that man took it, dude, he took me to my limit every time we wrestled. Uh, I hurt so bad after every single match, but like, it was, I feel like it elevated the both of us. And rather, like, he was pinned by me or not, I feel like we both left that, um, that feud better wrestlers than we entered it. And if we were to revisit it, it would only be times five or times 10. So I, I'm actually always excited to circle back with opponents and Macklin, so I'd really like to go back to wrestling again on a frequent basis. I feel like he brought the best out of me. And Macklin scored some monumental wins as of late. Talk about Rebellion, beats Jay White and Chris Saban in the same match, uh, recently pinned W. Morrissey. So I mean, he's, he scored some huge wins. Um, but that night at Hard to Kill, uh, not a lot of people know this, but you broke your hand that night. I broke my hand that night and I broke two of my front teeth. I broke this one and the one next to it and I had to take, uh, I think, three weeks 
off of wrestling to get a emergency root canals to save these two front teeth and then there was really nothing that they could do for my hand so I just kind of had to let that rest as is and then um, that was tough that was tough um, that was like my first big thing coming out of winning the championship and I felt like I had a lot of steam coming out of hard to kill and then um, things like that that are out of your control can really make it feel like the rugs getting yanked out from under you and that's kind of what it felt like so you only took how many weeks off I took three weeks off total. For a broken hand and two busted teeth. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. So that was that was January. February, we, we kind of step out of the ring a little bit. That was an extraordinarily difficult month for you emotionally. You lost your mother. What was your relationship like with your mom? So, um, it was actually my best friend's mom. I did not grow up knowing my mother. My mother has never been in the picture. Um, she wasn't in the picture until I was 14 years old, and we've never had a healthy relationship. Um, so in a weird retrospect, I feel like the universe has blessed me with a lot of maternal figures, and um, Andy was every bit of my mother that my mom should have been. And uh, she passed away of stage four breast cancer, and uh, I hadn't seen her in two years before she had passed because of a, a disagreement between her son and I that should have never affected the relationship. So when she passed away, I felt a lot of guilt because I hadn't seen her in so long, but I actually got to see her on the last day that she was, she was coherent and able to have conversation for, and I had one of the last conversations that she had with anyone. And I remember the day I walked into her house after meeting Cash when I was in like the eighth grade, I walked in and she goes, is your name Trey McBrayer? And I said, yeah. And then I was like, how do you know that? And she goes, is your best friend Melvin McLean and your sister Kayla? And I said, yeah, how, how do you know all this? She goes, I was your preschool teacher. She had known me my whole life and she had known the story about my mother. And from the time I stepped in that house when I was 14, she always made sure I was okay. She always sent me loving messages. She always made sure I was good. So it speaks to how important that relationship was, not your birth mother, but someone that you identified on social media, privately to me, that you lost your mom. So you go from that in February. Very short amount of time, you come back to work here at Impact Wrestling. You had the, the pink gear. I talked to you before the show, and I was so impressed at how well you were keeping everything together. How important was it for you to get back into the ring? I remember right before I went out to the match, I couldn't keep my tears back. It just, it just didn't feel right. She had never seen me wrestle in person, and it was hard to know that the first time she was gonna see me was, you know, from, from the other side. And uh, Madison Rain was there, and, uh, so was uh, Lady Frost and Rosemary and everyone just was really, really sweet to me before I went out because I was having such a hard time. And uh, the moment the music hit and the fans came up, I didn't realize how much I'd missed them in four weeks. And uh, I got through it like, like it was nothing. And I just remembered the moment the match was over, I just wanted to point up to her. You know, I saw, I, um, and I want to shout out my gear maker if I can. Uh, wears a gear makes all of my gear and when I reached out to get these tights done uh, I was like you know just if you can rush them, man I'll pay you whatever and he sent me the most kind message back after him was like dude this pair is on me I can't imagine what it's like to to go through what you're going through right now and uh, just go out there and represent your mom the best you can so we put her uh, her race number on the back along with the team name Andy's Angels and her race number was 777 and then we took the the spider tray TM logo and put a breast cancer awareness ribbon around it. And uh, I'm never gonna stop wearing that gear. And if they get ruined, I'm just gonna make another pair. That's a good idea. I think that's a fantastic idea. Back inside the ring, you're still defending the championship. You're competing at an extraordinarily high level. One of the most important wrestlers in this company. Um, and then on top of that, the thing that I always get blown away by is you have another art that you love and you start putting out some of your music. 
on social media. It, it blows me away to see people within the wrestling world who've really done so well in one craft in wrestling, and then, oh, by the way, I'm gonna dabble in this <laughs> as well. Uh, talk to me about that a little bit. Man, I've written music since I was 12, um, and I always wanted to be a rapper when I was younger. I always wanted to be a wrestler at the same time, and uh, I gave rapping a good chance in like in the eighth and ninth grade, we would do local concerts and stuff like that. And I started wrestling so young though that that kind of took over once it is once it was introduced into my life. I started training August first, two thousand nine. I was only fourteen years old and twenty nine days away from turning fifteen. Um, I fell so in love with it. I dropped out of high school my first semester of sophomore year so I could train full time and go to online school and. I became so involved in that, I stopped going to online school. I actually didn't finish high school until after I got my X Division Championship. I got my X Division Championship and I told myself I'm gonna go get my GED now. And I did that the following month. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. So then you roll into Rebellion, the end of April. Uh, you're set to defend the X Division Championship in a triple threat match against Ace Austin, your longtime rival, and Speedball Mike Bailey, who's been lighting up the place. Uh, a few days before that, um, you announced on social media that you lost your grandmother. Yeah. What happened there? Um, so, uh, I have a, man, my family tree is really weird, man. I got a lot of half brothers and stuff like that, but um, I haven't, I lost all of my grandparents at a very early age. My brother, Ryan, we, we share the same mother. It was his grandmother. And uh, I wasn't allowed to see Ryan growing up because his, his father and my father didn't get along and his father didn't want us around very much. And uh, if it wasn't for Ryan's grandmother, our Nan, you know, stepping up and giving us somewhere to have a brotherhood and have a relationship, then I wouldn't have gotten to know my brother. So what she did, you know, for me growing up meant a lot to me and she was always there. And she was so supportive of wrestling. She was so worried about it all the time. I remember uh, right before I returned to Impact, I went over her house actually and we watched, uh, she wanted to watch some Ultimate Warrior stuff. <laughs> I don't know why, so we watched some Ultimate Warrior stuff for like three hours. And uh, it just, it, it's, it's so hard. This year's been kicking me in the, in the gut and then when I go to get up, it follows up in the face and I'm, uh, 2021 kind of sucks right now, I'm a, or 2022. That's how rough it's been. I don't even accept that this year is happening yet, but it is, man, it is, and it is what it is. Well, and it, it was a brutal week because then you go to Rebellion. Oh, awesome. Triple right. threat matches are chaotic. Everybody understands that. And it hurt even worse that it was Ace Austin. Ace Austin has always uh, had the better numbers, it seems like, against you, especially when the exhibition championship has been at stake or when he's been the champion. Uh, you get your contractual rematch at Under Siege, Ace wins. Now he's off to the best of the Super Juniors, representing the X Division Championship, but you get your chance once again at Slammiversary. So, is that the night that your 2022 turns around? It's gotta be, because I don't want to be in this position much longer, dude. <laughs> I don't, I don't like, I don't like everything that's been going on, so I gotta do something to change it. And if Slammiversary is the only chance I get in 2022, then I gotta buckle down and make it happen. Especially 20 years of Impact Wrestling, Slammiversary, Ultimate X, a match that defined this company from the word go, you could be potentially holding that championship, propelling down like Spider Trey all the way to the canvas with the championship. What would that moment mean to you? It would make it feel like all the hardship that I've gone through this year would be worth something. Best of luck to you come to Slammiversary Train. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.